Hey guys, Stripter here. Today I'm glad to be one of the very first people on YouTube to be able to share with you some Call of Duty Black Ops 4 PC gameplay. Yes, this is actual PC gameplay that I recorded at E3. If you look a little bit closer at the keybinds, you'll see Q, E, G, uh, F to pick up guns, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever for the kill streaks, and some other options will pop up occasionally. I'm also playing on the new map Frequency, which is by far my favorite of the maps that I've played so far. Frequency is, it's very much a Treyarch map. It's a three lane map with a few cross lanes. It's very crisp, it's clean looking. The colors are all on the spectrum of colors that I can actually see being a colorblind player, so I loved it. And it, it's a little bit of a bounce house, but I had a good time with it. However, today we are here to talk about the PC version, and this is where my optimism is going to turn down quite a bit. The short story is the PC version was rough. That's not what I was hoping to report, and I'm very well aware that in a previous video I said the PC version was looking good, but that's the difference between looking over somebody's shoulder and watching it versus actually playing it. I got frame rate stutters and micro freezes, and unfortunately that was not unique to my station. The majority of the people that I talked to after the event said that they got it. A few people said that their stations ran smooth, but mine had a lot of little stutters and freezes. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see or notice them in the gameplay because they do happen kind of fast, but you'll definitely see them at a few points later on. And my opinion about this PC version of Black Ops 4 is that it definitely needs more work before launch because what we played was definitely not launch ready. This isn't the channel where I hate on things. I, I could sit here and complain about the PC build all day. This is the channel where we learn things and today I'm going to do an in-depth analysis about what is good and bad about the PC version and for the bad things I'm going to try to offer some constructive criticism on how to make them better. And unfortunately, if you pay really close attention to the gameplay, you'll notice that my gameplay capture is bugged. I have no audio because that's super glitched out. There's frame tearing on the screen, so if you want to freeze frame the video at some points, you will see the frame tearing. And there's some resolution scaling problems as well. I have a feeling that I was running at a significantly higher frame rate than the Elgatos were set up to capture at and there may have been some slightly off resolution problems between for capturing a PC on an Elgato and that caused some issues with the capture though I do want to say in the version of the game that I played the frame tearing and the resolution scaling was not an issue like the the the, the frame tearing issue just like was not there in the gameplay I think it was literally a frame rate problem with the capture card but we're going to talk about the good things about the PC version and then we're going to move into the negative things about halfway into this video so good things Customization options are there, big time. There are loads and loads of customization options. I got to see the keybind page and some of the gameplay options page. A lot of the other pages were locked, but custom keybinds have their own page with some default loadouts and custom loadouts you can play with. It loads up a big keyboard that you can look at that's color coded between movement and abilities and weapons and all sorts of different stuff. And it shows you exactly what each option is and, and a big color wheel, kind of like a lot, how a lot of gaming keyboards work these days, how they have your keys bound to different colors and they light up different colors. Speaking of which, the team at Treyarch decided to add compatibility hooks for for gaming keyboards, so when I customize stuff, whatever my in-game keyboard colors were would also show up on the actual keyboard that I was playing, and they would flash and do different things, like when my specialist ability was ready, it would flash and let me know, and when my kill streaks were ready, like number three would flash to let me know my UAV was good to go. So at a glance, it was really easy to just look down and press it. That's a good start in my opinion. It's nice to have. It's something that all other PC games have. And at the event, I did change a few keybinds to make it a little bit more comfortable for me. And there was no auto-aim on PC. I didn't plug in a controller and try because that just wasn't an option at this event. But at least by default, keyboard and mouse, no auto-aim whatsoever. There were loads of gameplay customization options. You had mouse sensitivity all the way from extremely sensitive to play on your entire desktop, swipe your arm around kind of sensitivity. They had mouse input scaling, mouse acceleration, different levels of sensitivity for when you aim down sights, how far you wanted to aim down sights, how much your aim down sights would affect your custom field of view setting, which we'll get to in a little bit. And they also had toggle or hold aim down sights that you could change a little bit. I think they, you could change those 
between weapon classes, but you can choose either toggle or hold. Of note, hold to aim down sights is your default. I'll, I'll admit that I've been not on Call of Duty PC for a long time, but most of the PC games I have have clicked to toggle ADS on and off, or at least that's just how I've been playing it. So I wasn't super used to the hold to aim down sights. However, it's a very fast paced game. You're turning around a lot, you're ADSing and un ADSing, so that default option was the best one, and I eventually would go back to it pretty quickly because it was very, very helpful. There was no shortage of HUD customization options either. The most interesting ones were that you could turn allied and enemy health bars on and off. You could turn objective indicators on and off. You could turn on and off almost every single element about your HUD. And there were few little options for color or opacity and things like that. I didn't play with them too much because I wanted it to look like normal Black Ops 4 gameplay. But the options were definitely, definitely there. The page I was on had a lot of customization options for your abilities so that you could do different abilities. Some of them you're supposed to hold down to kind of channel for lack of better words and some of them are throwables and some of them are deployables. So each ability, specialist or piece of equipment had its own set of options and even in game like for example Firebreak, when you change it my, uh, my like nuclear radiator thing would just say hold but if I changed it it would say toggle so that uh, an unfamiliar player, even if you, if you don't play the character too much, you would know what was going on and you can change the field of view up to 120. I didn't capture gameplay with that because I just didn't, it was just a super late night capture event. I'm, I'm doing this commentary like 5 in the morning, I'm running on zero sleep, but I just didn't think to do that. Uh, I played three games on PC and then I was like, oh man, for my fourth game I should play 120 field of view and just get some like crazy quake kind of looking gameplay, but unfortunately that was when I had to be done and rotate over to PlayStation. So I don't have any gameplay of that, but field of view options are there, I think it goes from 60 to 120. And there were locked tabs for options that I could not get into. On PC, they had options for display, graphics, audio. There was one called interface. There was one for chat, and there was one for accessibility. Accessibility, I'm assuming, is where you'll find your uh, like handicap keybinds and uh, colorblind stuff like that. So I don't know what's in those, but if they're representative of the other options that I saw, I'm sure that they will be bountiful. As in a general note, the UI for the menu was really well designed and had like sub menus and things that were super easy to access. The PlayStation 4 version of this game also had a tab for networking multiplayer music choices and voice choices which were interesting and uh, being the sneaky little guy that I am I decided to dig through all of the customization options to see if I could find something that wasn't supposed to be there and I did see one that said quote throw Molotov <laughs> there was a there was a special keybind for that one or at least some sort of option for it so I assume the Molotovs are coming and I will say that when the game ran well, it played really well. It, it worked more than it didn't work for the most part. And that when the game was running smoothly, it was really fun to play. It felt like a PC game, and I was very happy with it. Matter of fact, I was comfortable enough with it that when I moved back over to PlayStation 4, I felt like I had gone back to Peasant Town. When you see my PlayStation gameplay, you'll see my aim is all kinds of off, and my reaction time is potato, and it just feels really uh, strange swapping that fast. However... This build of Black Ops 4 did not work all the time. The graphics looked great, they looked better than what I was able to record, and I don't know if they had anti-aliasing on yet, or at least not turned up very high. The gameplay looked very uh, crisp, it kind of reminded me of a PC game with like your anti-aliasing on medium, so or maybe that's just reflective of my capture card problems, I'm not sure. And with that, we're moving into the bad stuff. The Black Ops 4 PC build that I played at E3 was not stable, and in my opinion, it was not ready to be shown to the public. It, we probably should not have been there capturing that. It was, uh, it just wasn't ready for public showing. I got a decent amount of frame rate stutters and micro freezes. They would just kind of just chop a little bit and drop from what I assumed to be about 90 FPS down to probably like 30 or less, and occasionally the game would just freeze. Uh, I would call it a micro freeze. It was very, very short, maybe like three, four, five frames kind of, but I was just locked. That's milliseconds in real time, but that's seconds where you're just locked and you can't do anything, and it was really, really frustrating, and it happened almost immediately when I started playing, and I noticed it, and the first thing I thought was like, oh man, this, just, this is not good, this, oh, this is awkward, crap, I'm gonna have to make a negative video, because it's, 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 I feel morally responsible to share an honest opinion in the bad things, even though I really want to be excited about the game. 
The micro stutters and frame rate freezes mostly happened at the beginning of the match and would get less frequent as the match continued. It would hit like a certain point where it was kind of infrequent. But the first couple minutes of any match that I played had quite a few of them. Again, you may not be able to see them super well in the video, but I could definitely, definitely feel them. And they would chop extremely hard when play of the game came on. Like, for whatever reason, the play of the game system was just not functioning on PC, and it was chop and stutter city. It may just be because it's an early build, it may be because the machines weren't ready, or we were running them through Elgato's, or I know that we were running them on a host machine, which had a CODcaster system already up and running, and I don't know if maybe the CODcaster system wasn't ready, because they were just spectating us, like they were watching us on the CODcaster doing things, so I guess CODcaster confirmed. I'm not sure what was causing it, but it was definitely noticeable, and unfortunately it happened most frequently when I was being shot. When somebody would shoot me, and I would take that uh, damage and it would play the noise and shake my screen, that would cause it the most often. The second most often time it would happen was when I was shooting somebody else. For whatever reason, when my bullets would hit and maybe try to register, or maybe it was the smoke or the blood effects or something, that was the most common time. And of course, when you're shooting somebody and being shot, it, it, just, it just doubles up. So that's probably the worst possible time to have frame stutters or freezes. And uh, yeah, they were there. And the, the stutters would also cause my inputs to screw up for a little bit. I noticed it primarily on the mouse because I just that's just the most sensitive thing and I suppose that's what everybody will notice. It's similar to just kind of having a stutter or freeze in any other game. When that happens, your inputs kind of go crazy and your, your aim gets thrown off and that was not fun at all. I really didn't like that and this is not a strong showing for Black Ops 4 PC at E3. The other bad things about the PC version is that there were several small default options that were just a bit odd. You can't deselect items in create a class, and by that I mean I wanted to go to my create a class and just take everything off and use 0 out of 10 points and start from scratch. You can't do that on PC. There's no remove item button. There's no keybind. There's no click. There's no, I actually tried to grab an item and like drag and drop it into the empty space, nothing. So on console you can just hit square or whatever and you can just wipe it and just put a new item in. And I actually pulled a developer over to ask him how do I deselect items, maybe thinking I'm stupid and I missed a button. And he's like, ah uh, yeah, I, I don't know if we can do that. The best way to do it is just, just pick a new item and when the menu uh, pops up, pick which other item you want to trade it for. And I, I told him again, I don't want to do that. I just want to deselect some items and start from scratch and he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think we can do that in this build. Just the, the fastest way I do it is I just pick a new item and then I pick which one I want to trade for. And that's like the slowest way to do create a class. And the fact that there's no deselect item option is just a little bit frustrating. Honestly, it's like super easy to work around and it costs me all of two seconds of my time. But it's indicative of, a, of an oversight that just shouldn't be there. It's a small thing that, in the words of our God Emperor Trump, is bigly frustrating. The default keybind for grenades was G, or your, your equipment was G, and that makes sense. G for grenade and G for equipment, it's been that way in Call of Duty for a long time. But it just seemed a little bit odd because I couldn't, like, I'd have to move my finger off of my movement keys to do that, so I couldn't really, like, strafe right if I wanted to. I mean, I could move around all the other directions and look right, but having to hold down a key like that, it was a little goofy to me. I'd probably just bind it to mouse when I get home, so the customization options will save me. Just a little weird. Maybe I don't play enough COD on PC. And there were two different buttons for slide and crouch. There was just, like, a regular crouch button, and there was a prone button, and that makes perfect sense. I'm all on board for that. But then there was a different button you had to hit to slide. Like, shift was crouch. No, it was control was crouch. And C was the button you had to do the crouch slide with, and Z was prone. But on PlayStation, the crouch and the slide crouch are the same thing. They're movement dependent, so I'm not... But then it's, it's a click versus a hold, so maybe that's something I'm not familiar with. But it, it took me a few minutes to learn that, and I wasn't super on board with it. That's the negative things about the PC version. The, the minor little things about the deselect and, uh, you know, I don't like this and that. It's just nothing compared to the micro stutters. If this game goes full release and has those micro stutters, that's going to be a nightmare. And for those of you curious about things that were considered OP during the reveal, there were some things that were reworked. Sound was reworked a bit. Gunshots were louder. Headshots seemed a little bit different. It could just be the Astros or the settings. But generally speaking, everything seemed much louder. The guns were significantly smokier, they had additional bullet effects, and the sniper rifles were definitely using the blackout bullet animations. 
They were they were hit scans in game. They were instant, but those bullet animations were not instant, and they were they were loading up like a projectile kind of animation. It literally reminded me of sniping people with the AWM in uh, like PUBG, how you can shoot and you can just see that bullet travel for like a frame or two before it dinks people. It was exactly the same here. I don't know if that's in, on purpose and they just want players to get used to both, but I noticed it. Stim got nerfed. I can't spam it as much as I used to. The timing went down. You still heal fast. It's still important, but Stim got a nerf. The medic guy got nerfed a bit too, I think. I'll have some medic gameplay for you tomorrow, and we'll talk about him, but it was way harder for me to get up to 300 health. I think it was more dependent on what number of teammates I healed. Maybe I just had teammates that were harder to heal and I didn't boost them as much, but he got nerfed in the amount of total health that he could have. It was like way hard to get him up to 300, and there were some slight balance changes on the guns. I guess a few of the guns were like slightly different, but overall not too much. So yeah, I hope that Treyarch fixes these problems before launch, because these could be big problems. <laughs> I, I want to play this game on PC, or at least have PC fans be happy. I want it to be good. I'm not the, the guy who runs the channel that just like wanks off to hating on Call of Duty, but this was just not a good build. Guys, that is all for my video and my opinion on the Black Ops 4 PC version. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe.